time to study the word of God. Amen? Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Let us read this responsibly. And I'm going to teach, uh, to teach the lesson about the attesting mindset of a Christian. Let us read this responsibly, 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Help us as we study your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so the way of discernment is the way of spiritual protection, blessing, and fruit. If a Christian is not discerning, there is a possibility that he's not going to become spiritually prosperous or he will not grow spiritually or he will not be protected spiritually there may be a chance that he will miss out on the blessing of God and most definitely this Christian will not bear fruit as a child of God so in our day to day it is popular to say that careful testing of everything by God's word is Phariseeism, legalism, and judgmentalism. So ito yung sinasabi ngayon. If you always go back to the word of God, if you try to uh, test things according to the word of God, then you simply will be branded a legalist by people or you will be branded as like a Pharisee. I remember when I talked to one of our members, she said that I have a friend who is attending this church, pastored by this particular pastor. And when I shared to him, pastor, about first fruits, and then he asked her pastor and he said, Pastor Joel Madlangawa is teaching about first fruits. And the teaching of first fruits is not the same as what we are doing in our church. And then he answered the member, well, Pastor Madlang Awa is a dogmatic person. So meaning to say, it is as if it is wrong to base things on the Word of God. It is as if you do not always have to go to the Word of God in order to prove things that are happening even in our churches today. So there is a concerted effort, consciously or unconsciously, to drift away from the practice of testing everything according to God's word. The foundation of, for testing is a strong knowledge of God's word. In verse number 2, it says that, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. So in order for you to have this mindset of testing things according to the word of God, then you must have a strong knowledge of God's word. It is necessary, listen, to know God's word, but not only to know it, but to delight in the word of God. Yung nasisiyahan ka sa word of God. Kasi pwedeng alam mo, hindi ka nasisiyahan, hindi ka mag-spend ng more time. Pero kapag ka nasisiyahan ka, you're delighting in the word of God, then you are not, go, not just going to read it, but you will meditate upon the Word of God day and night. Meaning to say, it's going to be a constant companion in your life. That your day will begin and your day will end with the Word of God. That even somewhere in between, you are going to go to the Word of God. Why? Because you know that it will not only intellectually satisfy you, but you are delighted in studying or reading the Word of God. You see, if you love the Word of God, they are uh, more than our necessary food. They taste better 
than the things that we are enjoying in life. Look at Psalms chapter 19, verse number 10. The Bible says, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. That's the word of God. Referring to the word of God. But if we're going to look at our life today, or if we're going to look at our word today, they desire gold much more than the word of God. They desire honey much more than the word of God. Because there is a correlation. Gold means money. Honey, no money. No honey. Dito galing yung salitang yun eh. Yung kasabihan na yun. If there is money, then definitely there is honey. So th this is what we need to understand. And only this kind of relationship that a Christian will have to the Word of God will protect him in his Christian life and Christian growth. There is no success apart from the Word of God. Joshua 1.8 This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and what night, that thou mayest observe to do according to the scriptures, according to all that is written therein. For then, if you do this, for then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So apart from the word of God, there is no way that we can attain success in life. Whatever area of life we may be talking about. So that is why in order to have a testing mindset, we must have a strong knowledge of the word of God. So the man of God measures everything by God's word and rejects every counsel, every way, every teaching that is contrary to the word of God. Yun yun. Kaya kung ikaw ay man or woman of God, ang gagawin mo, itetest mo lahat sa Word of God. And anything that goes contrary to the Word of God is something that we need to reject. Agri ba kayo? Amen. Kasi yun ang totoo. Pag hindi, eh, walang mangyayari sa atin. Buhay. Bilang mga mana ng palataya. Tinan mo sa Psalms 119 verse number 28. Please listen carefully, take note, and understand. Open your hearts and open your mind because what we are studying here perhaps will be the most important knowledge and wisdom that you need in life. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. You see, the psalmist esteemed all of God's word to be right. It, it means that from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible or the word of God is right. It is the truth. You cannot find any iota of error in the word of God. So in order for us to have a testing mindset, the believer must have an absolute standard of truth and that is the word of God. Amen. Absolute. Meaning to say, non-negotiable. Meaning to say, unmovable. Meaning to say, something that cannot be moved. Kaya nga, unmovable. John 17, 17. This is what, how the Lord Jesus Christ described the word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What is the word of God? The Bible, what is the Bible? Truth. No matter what people may think of the Word of God, this is the absolute truth. Some people may say, I do not believe in hell. God says there is a hell. You may not believe it now, but when you die, you will know there is a hell because you will be there. Ganon, kahit ano pa sabihin mo. Hindi ako naniniwala ng tao may kaluluwa. Talagang mahirap, wala ka palang kaluluwa eh. Di ba? Pag sinabing wala kang puso, wala kang kaluluwa. Ba, ibig sabihin, ibang klaseng tao ka. So, the word of God is truth. And what will happen to this truth? Look at John 10.35. 
John 10, 35. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Hindi magkakamali ito. You cannot break the word of God. You cannot find anything wrong in the word of God. You cannot prove that the word of God is wrong because it is something that cannot be broken. Meaning, it is right, it is authoritative in every detail of our lives. Name it. And the authority is the word of God. You see, we are living in a dark world. And the only light, listen, that we can have is the word of God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. 2 Peter 1.19, the Bible says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Ano raw siya? Sure. Pag sinabing sure, sigurado. Pag sinabing sigurado, sure. Ayun yun eh, di ba? We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well. Ano raw ang magandang gawin mo? Ye do well that ye take heed. Pakinggan mo, gawin mo, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So the only truth, listen, perhaps the only truth that we can see in our time today is the Word of God. Because almost everything is distorted. Almost everything is corrupted. Even the sex of people are now corrupted. I, I just saw on the Facebook that as of uh, this morning, 53% in the Philippines voted yes for same-sex marriage and only 47% uh, disagreed with same-sex marriage. You see, this is what I'm thinking. Those people who wanted this law to be passed, I would like to ask them, what if your parents believe? in same-sex marriage. Di ba? Wala sila ngayon dito. Pwede ba mag-anak pa rin yung lalaki? Pwede ba mag-anak pa rin yung babae? Eh minsan lalaki, babae na nga, hirap pang manganak. Yung pareho pa. Oh. So I, I, I'm just wondering what if their parents believe in same-sex marriage, they will not be here and they are trying to stop those people that should be born because of abortion and same-sex marriage. They are disobeying God and contradicting the word of God that we need to go and multiply and that man was made for a woman and the woman for the man. And they are trying to destroy the very image and the very plan of God. Why? Because this word is a corrupt word and it has a corrupt system. Tignan natin kung mapalitan ni Abante yung bagay na yan doon sa kongreso. So this is something that we need to understand. That is why it is very important for us to know the word of God. So the psalmist rejected every false way. As I have said, if something is contrary to God's word, the believer should reject it as false. Maliwanag po yan. So, a child of God must not be sitting on the fence. Ano yun? Yun nasa bakod ka. Pwede kang doon sa kanan, pwede kang doon sa kaliwa. You must cast your vote on the Word of God. That everything that is true is according to the Word of God and everything that is false is opposed to the Word of God. So anything that is contrary to God's Word is false, it is wrong, it is erroneous, but everything according to the Word of God, even though I may not agree with it, is always right. We need to understand that. And do that. Look at Isaiah chapter twenty, verse uh, chapter eight, verse number twenty. Isaiah chapter eight and verse number twenty. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to the scripture, if they speak not according to this word, it is because 
there is no light in them. So even in the Old Testament, even when they have just a few scriptures, they already said that anything not according to the scripture is because these people are natural men, unsaved, unbelievers, and they do not understand the word of God. But they already know that if anything is contrary to God's word, then it is darkness and there is no light in anything that they say. Apply to New Testament, Acts 17, 11. This should be the uh, motto of every Christian. Acts 17, 11. There were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. This should be the attitude of every Christian when it comes to the word of God. You know, the word search comes from the word, from the Greek word, euhenes, or sa English, Eugene. Kaya pag Eugene ang pangalan mo, ibig sabihin ano ka? Noble. A noble man. So may mga Eugene, ibig sabihin, you should be noble because that is your name. It means that in God's eye, the true nobleman is the person who loves the truth and tests everything by the word of God. Amen? Yun yung noble. Kung gusto mo maging noble person, you search everything according to the word of God. But being noble is something that is despised in our time. As I have said. O hindi, verse. Anong verse mo dyan? Magbigay ka ng ano? Puro naman kay Bible. Oh. Eh, no, gusto mo. Puro baboy. Eh, di nag-ano ka, nag-cholesterol ka. Tumas ang cholesterol mo. Oh, but siyempre, puro Bible. Because we're talking about the Word of God. Amen? So, these Bereans will listen, they will receive, but they will ascertain. That word search or Eugene has the connotation that they ask questions. So when they listen to the Word of God, and there may be things that is not uh, natural or common from the Word of God, once they get home, they are going to search the Word of God, asking questions and finding the answers in the Word of God. Ito po yung mga tagabirians. That's why they were called noble. They did not take someone's word for it, but they listened to the Word of God before passing out judgment. Look at Proverbs 18.13. Ito kasi nangyayari ngayon eh. Problema. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. We posted something, they will read the title and they will judge without reading the whole matter. Oh, mga haters yan. They hate first fruits. Oh, these are haters. They hate non-transfer of membership. Oh, these are haters. They hate tithes and offering under the law. And they will not even bother to read, but they will judge us. What did the Bible say? These people are full. And it will be to their shame. Why? Because according to John chapter 12, verse number 48, look at what the Bible says in John 12, 48. He that rejected me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. They will be judged by the word of God. We will be judged by the word of God. So if our practice our life, our doctrine is not according to the Word of God, then we are going to be judged by the Word of God. That's why we need to do things according to the Scriptures. That is, the, that is something that is very, very important in our lives. As I have said, many pastors and churches have rejected our teachings without having heard it or read it and tried to study it. But this Bereans, they search the scripture daily. Sino pa kaya ngayon ang nagsearch ng scripture daily? Baka bihira na. 
konti na lang. This is the authority for testing. They were zealous and they were persistent. They were willing to work at it day and night because testing things according to the scripture and knowing the scripture was not a mere passing interest. It entails hard work. Hard work. Mahirap, hindi madali. Kaya konti lang ang gumagawa. Ang gusto kasi natin ganyan, pag binasa natin ng Bible, alam na natin agad. Hindi ho eh. It is something that we really need to study. They tested everything by scripture. They did not believe every word like the fool. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15. Proverbs 14, 15. The Bible says, The simple believe at every word, but the prudent man look at well to his going. You see, sometimes it is a problem. You Listen to this very carefully, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are in a warfare. There is a spiritual battle going on. The devil is trying to do everything in order to defeat us. And the devil will not uh, will throw everything in the wind in order to win this particular battle. So there is no sacred cow when it comes to the devil. But this is what is happening. A person will be taught the word of God, will repent of his sins and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. And this person will become like a sponge absorbing everything that is being taught him from the word of God. But sometimes the problem is this. They will att be attending a church that is not really teaching the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So everything that will be taught them will be absorbed. And therefore, they are already corrupted at the onset. And that is the reason why. We have so many Christians that are displaced. Wala sila sa proper place. You see, even here in Cambodia, there are so many missionaries and they call themselves missionaries without even understanding what a missionary is. They will go to the village, teach some children, and they call themselves missionaries. They will go to a place and try to share the word of God, and they call themselves missionaries. Missionaries are a person sent out in a specific place for a specific job. And most of these are church planting ministries. That's why when they say they're missionaries, I, I usually ask them, which church or are you going to start a church? No, 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 we are just going to talk to people and teach people. Well, that you may well qualify as a soul winner, but not as a missionary in the strictest sense of the word. And so many people are like that. They are being deceived. They are being taught which is not a, a word that is not rightly divided and therefore at the onset, they are already defeated. Listen, it matters which church you attend after you got saved. Oy. It matters. Why? Because if you are in a liberal church, you are going to become a liberal Christian. If you are in a, uh, uh, a, an emerging church, you are going to become a worldly Christian. But if you are in a conservative, fundamental, and Bible teaching church, then you will know the Word of God. That is why the Bible says that every pastor must be apt to teach. But how can a pastor be apt to teach if he will not even study the Word of God diligently and consistently in his life? There is one person that one member here had a conversation or chat over, the, uh, over a messenger of Facebook. And then he said that when I attended a university in the Philippines teaching uh, about the Bible, wherein some teachers are Americans, and he said that I heard preaching, expository preaching, purely from the Word of God. And then he goes back to his church, he said that I could not learn anything anymore because I saw that what they are preaching are mere stories 
experiences but not the things according to the Word of God. So when, once you are exposed to expository preaching and you enjoyed it and you understood it because you have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to enjoy any kind of preaching anymore until and unless it is purely from the Word of God. Hindi ka na mag-enjoy. Maano na, yung para bang pag, pag ngayon nakinig ka kay, kay yung lagi ko pinakikinggan, yung pinanggalingan ko sa San Pedro Laguna, mapapailing ka na lang. Kasi puro joke lang naman talaga eh. Kahit naman ako, pag nagpipreach naman, pag tinanong, ano na, anong preaching ni Pastor Madlangawa, ang ganda, ano yun? Yung ganda ay niyang jokes. Y- yun, yun ang natatandaan ng tao eh. Hindi na yung Word of God. Bakit? Kasi hindi na pinipreach ang Word of God. Bakit? Kasi boring. Dear mo, you, you have to read so much and you have to spend so much time. And the reason why the preaching of God's Word today is boring is because we have so many members in the church that are not saved. And therefore, will never enjoy the Word of God. Di ba? Yung napapansin, si Pastor Jesse, pag nag-papers, di ba ang haba? Yung iba na bobor, pero yung mga talagang interesado sa Word of God, na ano sila? Uh, gusto nilang makinig pa. I, I preached for more than an hour in the Philippines and then the pastor said, Pastor, bitin kami. Ang ikse, bakit tinapos mo agad? Eh, sabi ko, pagod na pagod na ako eh. mag oras ako nagsisisigaw. Bitin pa pala yun. Why? Because they want to know more. That is what the pastor says, but I do not know if he shared the same sentiment of the church. Iba yun. Because the Word of God will be received differently by individuals. Merong interesado, merong eager, meron namang ayaw. Makinig ng Word of God. But in order for us to have this kind of mindset, a testing mindset, then we need to search the Scripture, we need to hear the matter, and we need to understand that the Scripture is enough for us to understand the will of God. Although it is not wrong to use concordance, it is not wrong to use other Bible study tools, but removing all of them, the Word of God is enough in order for us to know the will of God. So every Christian must be a Berean. Because the very foundation for the kind of Christian life that pleases the Lord is an intimate relationship with the Scriptures after the fashion of the noble Bereans. They are so desirous and interested in the Word of God. So as a Christian, we must test everything by God's Word. Let us look at Romans 16, 17. Is this commanded by God? You see, people may hate us. It doesn't matter, but this is what's important. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. How can you mark those that are teaching contrary to the doctrine if you do not know the Word of God? Amen? So, tanda mo, pag may nagtuturo ng kakaiba, Markahan mo yon, I-avoid mo yon. Bakit? Ililigaw ka nun. Ilalayo ka nun sa kalooban ng Panginoon. So that is why in the Bible, you can see clearly that we have been warned by the Apostle Paul to study the doctrine and if they are teaching something that is not according to the doctrine of the Word of God, we need to mark those people and avoid them. Why? They are causing division. Ano sabi ng, ng Bible? We must speak the same thing. We must have the same mind. And if something is teaching contrary to the Bible, then that person is causing division and strife in the middle of the church. Look at 1 Corinthians 14.29. Ito, maganda ito eh. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. You see, during this time, we are in a transitional period. The Word of God is not yet complete. And therefore, there are what we call revelations coming from the Lord. 
like speaking in tongue, like prophesying. Now we still have a prophecy, but from the Word of God, not outside of the Word of God. So, this also teaches that in a church, they should be what we call a ministry team. A church must not only be controlled by one person. Do you understand what I'm saying? A church, listen, must not only be controlled by one person. Why? Because it is easy for a church to be led astray if the church is being controlled by only one person. There must be a ministry team that will watch over each other, strengthen each other, exhort each other, and protect each other. That's why Paul says, let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If there is only one authority, only one pastor, and no deacons, no uh, elders, how can the other judge? If one will speak. And the Bible even says, let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. So this refers to a ministry team. That if one preacher will preach, then other preachers must listen and judge if what is being preached is according to the word of God. Just like a while ago, when I gave the answer, John questioned me. That is watching each other. That is helping each other. That is uh, challenging each other to know more of the word of God. He's not rebelling against me. He's not touching the anointed. He's simply saying, this is what I understand from the word of God. And it will make me very, very cautious when I preach or when I answer questions. Because I know people are going to listen and if I am wrong, then they are going to judge. Do you understand that? That's why in the first church, you will see that there are 12 apostles. They was with each other. Then when the apostle Paul came and there were some problems, they went back to Jerusalem and have a council in order to solve the problem. This is the problem with theocracy now. Where the pastor is the one who is in sole control of the church. And whatever the pastor wants must happen. If not, then go away from this church. Parang siya may ari ng simbahan. Pag yung gusto niya hindi nangyari, layas kayo. Hindi kayo pwede rito. Church ko to! Ang bihira. Doon tayo patay eh. Amen? Papalayas. It is very unthinkable na ang pastor palayasin ang miyembro. Kahit na pinapaalis mo na, meron pa rin better way of saying it. Parang, kapatid, if we cannot agree, maghiwalay tayo. Hindi yung, ayaw mo mag-agree sa akin? Ayaw ng pinto! Layas! Pumbira ka pa ba naman yung member? Baka naguguluan lang. Baka hindi niya lang alam kung ano nangyayari. So why not talk to that person? So this is the problem today. Why? Because there is no ministry teams inside the church. Isa lang ang may control. Si pastor lang. At lahat ng loyalty na kay pastor lang. Ang loyalty po sa Diyos sa Word of God bago sa pastor. Ganun. Kaya pag ang pastor tumaliwa sa Word of God at sa Diyos, hindi ka magiging loyal sa Kanya. Dalang loyalty mo, ultimately sa Diyos, at ang authority mo ay ang Word of God, ang pastor ay nagtutulong lang sa'yo para lumago sa pananampalataya. So that's why a ministry team is very important. There must be one senior pastor, of course, but there must be different people in the church that are involved in the ministry. Look at Philippians chapter 3, verse number 17. Philippians 3.17 Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have asked for an example. On the other hand, you mark those that are teaching what is right and you follow them. Mark mo yung mali ang turo, avoid. Mark mo yung tama ang turo, follow. 
Amen. Ang iba, yung mali ang turo, pinapakinggan pa, yun naman tama ang turo, pinapalo. Hindi pinafollow. Kung hindi, hinuhusgahan pa na masyado ka namang legalista. Ang legalista ho, yung nasa letra lang, hindi pinapaganing spirit of the word of God. At yung letra, law, yung spirit, grace. Ganun po ang ibig sabihin nun. So, tingnan nyo po, sino ba yung nagtuturo ng tama? Sundin nyo. Bakit tama ang turo eh? Apo, sorry, hindi ako sa tao nasunod. Hindi ka sa tao nasunod, sa tu- turo ng tao na nasunod sa Diyos. Yun ang ginagawa mo. Hindi tao sinusundan mo kung hindi ang Diyos pa rin. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 We're almost finished. Bak- mahaba pa to pero tapusin na natin sa mga ilang verses na lang. Prove all things. Ilan daw ipuprove mo? All. Ano yung all? Lahat. Ano yung lahat? All. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. When you prove, you will see if it is good or evil. If it is good, hold fast. If it is evil, then throw it away. Amen. That is how to prove all things. And proving all things is a command coming from the Lord. Look at 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Sa Diyos ba yung spirit? Sa Diyos ba yung turo? Sa Diyos ba yung nagtuturo? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Mga kapatid, pakinggan nyo ito. Ha? This was written by the Apostle John more than 2,000 years ago. So meaning to say, more than 2,000 years ago, there are already many false prophets. How much more today? Oh. Yun dapat natin isipin. Kung noon marami na ay paano pa ngayon? Ngayon, ilan na pastor? Sandamakmak na false prophets ang meron na. And you can hardly find the church today that is teaching the word of God. And if the church is teaching the word of God, then the church is not appreciated by people. Kaya nga sabi, you preach the truth and you will be preaching to a few people you preach a false gospel and you are preaching to thousands or even millions of people. Tama si Joel Austin, wala mang prince na tama. Sang katerba nakikinig. Mag-preach ka ng totoo. Iilan lang. At kadalasan yung mga a-attend, nakapakinig, hindi na babalik yun. Bakit? They do not appreciate the word of God. No natural man will appreciate the word of God. Amen? Revelation chapter 2, verse number 2, please. Two, two. Pompiang dos. Tumbukin mo ng sais. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thy canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. What does this mean? It means that a member of a church must be so knowledgeable in the Word of God that they will know if the preacher standing behind the pulpit is teaching the Word of God or not. Ikaw mismo, malala, may nag-preach dito at mali prinis niya? Ikaw mismo, alam mo, oops. Teka, 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 teka. Parang out of order yun ah. Parang mali yun ah. Ganun. Hindi may nag dito? Pag naligtas ka, hinanggap mo na si Kristo at nagkasala ka sa impyerno ka pupunta. Tapos amen ka mo? Wag. Alam mo agad, Hobbs? Hindi mo babastusin yung preacher, of course. We respect the preacher. But we will tell him or her, her, him, 
him. Because I'm a Jezebel. I'm a Jezebel preacher. But we will tell him, Sir, I believe according to the authority of the word of God that what you preach is wrong. I hope and I pray that you will dwell into the word of God so that you can only preach what is according to God's word. Amen? Ganun yun. Ikaw mismo malalaman mo. You know, we should not follow blindly and unquestioningly. Why? Because God's word is the only authority that a preacher can have. And he is under the authority of the word of God. Kaya nga pag ang tinuro niya wala na sa word of God, hindi na siya authoritative. Kahit sumigaw pa. Kasi pag sumigaw, uy, napaka-authoritative nun, sumisigaw. E ano yung sinigaw? Walang impyerno! Amen! Ang galing, authoritative, walang impyerno raw. Hindi o, oh. kahit binulong pa. Walang impyerno. Mali pa rin yun. Kahit naman bumulong pa, may impyerno. Tama pa rin yun. Kahit inantok ka pa, pag tama yung sinabi, may authority pa rin yun. Pero kahit nagsisigaw pa, kasi maraming pastor talagang sa sigaw na lang dadaanin eh. Kahit wala nang sense yung sinasabi. So kailangan maintindihan natin yan. Bakit? Kasi mahirap na tayo po ay mailigaw. Amen? So the ministry of testing requires, as I have said, teams of preachers and ministers. But in order for us to test everything, the congregation must be a well-taught congregation from the word of God. Kaya nga sabi ko, empowering the members of the church. Let the people know what they should know so that the people can help you when you are teaching something that is not right anymore. Bakit ba natatakot ang mga pastor na, ay hindi ko tuturuan mga member ko, baka matuto, mas, mas magaling pa sa akin. Pag ang member na turuan mo naging mas magaling sa iyo, magaling kang tagapagturo. You see, look at the teachers. They are great teachers, but they produce people better than them. Why? Because they are great teachers. They are good teachers. And that is how a teacher should be. If you can guide your student to become better than you are, then you made it in your profession. And the same thing, if a pastor can produce people that are better than him, then he is a good leader of that church. Several more verses. Philippians 3.17. Na basa na natin. Colossians 2.8. You see, the Bible is filled with warning. The pastoral epistle, those who will be studying the pastoral epistle, you will notice that almost 70% of the pastoral epistles are warning. They are warning people about things that can happen to them. Look at this. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the word and not after Christ. There are men who are going to spoil you. Corrupt you. Papanisin ka. Boom, panis. Magiging ganun ka. Pag ikaw ay nakinig sa kanila. Sabi niya, be careful of these people. 2 Timothy 3.13 Tinan mo mangyayari, bakit tayo mag-iingat? Ito, ito ang panahon natin. Ilang verses ito. 2 Timothy 3.13 But evil men and seducers, seducers shall wax worse and worse. Ano raw? Pasama ng pasama. Sino yung masasamang tao at yung uh, manunukso? Ano ginagawa? Deceiving and being deceived. That's why there are people who are very sincere. Makinig kayo. But they are deceived. Yung mga nagpupunta rito, na gumagastos at nagpupunta sa mga village, sincere itong mga ito, mga kapatid. But they do not know that they are being deceived. And there are those who are deceived, who will teach, they do not realize that they are deceiving. Yun yung problema na sa panahon natin. At ito yung karakteristik ng panahon natin. 2 Timothy 4, 3-4. Yung sabi ng Bible, For the time will come, when they will not endure sound 
doctrine. Hindi pa ba ngayon yan? Lalong-lalo na ngayon, nag-umpisa noon, hanggang ngayon. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. May nakikinig. Hindi na interesado. Kahit ilang teacher pa ilagay mo, wala na silang pakialam. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So preach the truth, they will turn away their ears. Preach fables or not true. And they will listen to you. But what's thou in all things and your affliction? Matthew 24, 4 to 5. We're almost uh, finished. Matthew 24, 4 to 5. Ano sabi dyan? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Ingat ka raw. Sino pinag-iingat? Ikaw. Paano ka mag-iingat? Know the word of God. Study the word of God. And you will be protected from error. For many shall come in my name. Using the name of Jesus saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. So if you are not careful, you will be deceived. Why? Not every person who mentioned the name of Christ is a follower of Christ. What did Paul says? If any will come to you and preach another Jesus. There is another Jesus. The Jesus of the Iglesia ni Cristo is a man and not God. The Jesus of the Mormons is a polygamist with many wives. The Jesus of the uh, Jehovah's Witness is a small God. The Jesus of the Catholics is a God that you can put inside the bread and you can even eat it. There are many Jesus, so we need to know the real Jesus. So you have to be careful because you will be deceived. So this is our time. It's becoming worse and worse and worse. And if Christians will decline in their spiritual condition, they will be an easy prey. P-R-E-Y. To these vultures and lion that is roaming around. Walk it about seeking whom he may devour. And last verses, Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. This is the problem. And we will end here. I hope and I pray that we will put these things to heart. That we may know what to do. For when the time, listen. For when the time ye ought to be teachers. Ye have need that one teach you again. What does it mean? Listen, look here. You have been taught, but you did not learn. So we need to be taught again, and again, and again. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. All you can understand are the basic things. And he said, not you, huh? the, the people being referred here. But you cannot understand the deeper things of God. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. You have been a Christian for a long time. Still, the description is you are a babe. Pag ang bata, hindi lumalaki, ano tawag doon? Chanak. Oh, hindi nalaki yung chanak eh. Yung anak ni Janice. Laging baby yan. O kaya, retarded. You may be growing, but you are still like a baby. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, matured. Even those who by reason of use. What does it mean? You study, you understand, you use, you practice. Reason of use have their senses exercised to discern. See? Pag ang word of God, pinag-aralan mo, in-apply mo, ano madidevelop sa'yo? Discernment. Discern what? Both good and evil. So the author of Hebrews, which according to many is the Apostle Paul, did not approve of the status quo of being a babe in Christ. But he rebuked them sharply that he said, Grow up! 
If not, you're going to be destroyed by the enemy. So Christian, are we growing in the faith? Are we maturing? There may have been lapses in our lives, but God in his time is giving us things that we need to understand and to know so that we can start growing. And as we grow, we can lead other people to Christian maturity so that they will have a testing mindset of not just accepting everything, but proving all things according to the word of God. A word of caution before we end. I am not teaching you to listen and then try to find what is wrong. No. You listen to the word of God. You know the word of God. And if something is wrong, you will notice it without even putting effort. Para bang alam mo yung perang original? Pag may inihalong fake doon, pag tinignan mo, Parang kakaiba to. Malalaman mo na lang kahit hindi mo hinahanap. The same thing with us. If we will have a testing mindset and we are skillful in the word of God, then if something is wrong, even without any effort, we will know it because the Holy Spirit will reveal it unto us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time.